In this video, we're going to go through everything you need to know to create a realistic kitchen in SketchUp and D5. We're going to go through the whole steps in modeling, materials, lighting, and the final render. And if you want to create realistic renders like this, watch the video all the way through the end. So we're going to start with something which is more so as hand-drawn 2D floor plan. And now this 2D floor plan, then we're going to move and draw it. Well, as you can see here, uh, this is a hand-drawn uh, 2D floor plan. And usually what most people use in CAD is AutoCAD. However, today I'm going to use something called the ZWCAD, which is a lot faster. It has some very cool features which allow you to draw a lot faster. And it is not as heavy in your workflow. And especially, uh, I love some of the features that this software has. Now, uh, I'm gonna get started and I'm gonna draw this. So I'm also gonna be focusing on the kitchen here. I'm not gonna draw the whole thing because we do not need that. I'm also gonna focus here on the kitchen. One of the best features that this software has is the smart mouse gestures. And what this means is that if I hold the right click on the mouse button and I just type in an L, this would automatically activate the line tool and by the way, as you can see, the software has a very similar interface to AutoCAD. That way, uh, it is self-intuitive for you if you are already transferring um, and if you're already using uh, AutoCAD. I just drew the L letter and as you can see, it automatically selected for me the line tool. And now I'm basically just going to draw this wall. I'm going to try to be as precise as I possibly can. As you can see, the uh, 2D floor plan has been photographed in a certain angle, so it's not 100% uh, in 90 degrees. But I will try to be as precise as I can without wasting too much time, obviously. So I'm just gonna draw uh, this whole uh, part of the wall. Well, that's something like this. And by the way, it has all of the features that AutoCAD has, plus some more, which I'm gonna show you in just a minute, uh, which honestly, uh, those are great. So basically just drew this very fast, very simple. Uh, and very easily. For example, I just show you how I can use the line tool just by right clicking and holding the mouse and drawing an L key. But if I actually want to draw a circle, I can basically just right click and gesture a C as you can see. And now I have the circle tool selected. So for example, if I wanted to draw this uh, table, I guess I could just click once, click twice, and now we have a circle, which is great. And by the way, uh, another very cool thing that ZWCAD allows you to do is to configure it all of these different options. So if I open the smart mouse config, you can see that all of the gestures they have here are um, basically tied to a command. Now, another very cool one is that if I right click and I just go to the left, it undoes, right? So it basically undoes the la last action that we took, which is so cool. And if I right click and go to the right, it basically reduces uh, the uh, last option that we did. What I want to do is I will also draw a line just uh, to be able to tell where we will have the kitchen cabinets. So it will be something like this. Let me go all the way to the line here. And then something else that I want to do is I also want to have uh, the uh, rectangle of where we'll have the island or maybe a dining area. So what we can do is we can also go here uh, at the smart mouse configuration and see if we actually have a rectangular tool which uh, it doesn't seem like we have, but we can do the R key and the command can be rectangle. Let's try that out and I can add. Uh, if I draw the R key, is this a rectangle now? Yes. So as you can see, I just added a command and automatically works as a shortcut. Honestly, this just speeds up your whole workflow when you're using a CAD software. Now, something else. Uh, which is very cool if you're collaborating and working with other teams is that if you go here at manage um, Well, actually, no, let's go to tools. Yeah, it's a tools. There's something called smart voice and basically uh, What this means is that if I click this and then I select a whatever point So for example specify a position I just click here I can basically record the voice and give instructions to someone who might be working in the same file as well So for example, I can just hold and say uh, can you please extend this line for five centimeters to the right, whatever, right? And now basically uh, the smart voice recording can now be played. So if I just click here, I'm not sure if you guys can hear my desktop audio. So uh, then I could just do something like plotting it, 
use it as a PDF. But if I actually want to use this as a schedule file, I could just export it as a DWG file and I could import it immediately. Now, just to show you, honestly, every option that you have in AutoCAD is here as well. I mean, we could, uh, we could try, um, so for example, the hash tool, in case you want to uh, use something a bit more specific. Um, let me just go so I can just use the solid tool and I could just draw inside these. I can use a black color, for example, uh, while well, the boundaries are not closed there. But you can uh, you can see the point that I'm trying to make, right? So this is very useful. Another very cool feature that ZWCAD 2025 has is that it can convert raster images to vector data automatically. Here's how. Attach raster image and then in the parameter configuration dialog box, select an existing parameter configuration or edit the configuration itself. After modifying the parameters, you can start the vectorization in just one step. After the vectorization is done, you can merge, connect and break the vector objects. You will get a perfect vectorization result and this function can save you time and money into converting paper drawings and digitalizing them into DWG files. If you're interested in all of these features, you can get the ZWCAD efficiency and perpetual license by clicking the link below where you will get a 30 day free trial. This is going to be the actual kitchen that we're going to create from the ZWCAD floor plans that we drew earlier. And I'm going to go at import and I'm going to go ahead and import the floor plan that we have here. So drawing of kitchen uh, entities, entities imported. So now we just have the lines here. Now, I'm, first thing first, I'm going to uh, make this into scale. So what I can do is I'll just uh, go inside the group. I can draw a line from here for about 60 centimeters. And then I can uh, go inside once again, I can select all of these. I can use a tape measure tool. I can get started from, uh, well, let me just take this off. Yeah, I can get started from here. I'll click once and then type in 60, click enter, resize the group or component. Um, and yeah, now it's resized. So I'm gonna take this off. We can just measure it to make sure that we actually resized and put it to scale correctly because we didn't draw into scale the floor plans. Uh, we just scale it once we are in SketchUp. So yeah, this is 60 centimeters. Cool. I'm going to go inside. Uh, I'm going to select this and I will just click once. As you can see, the wall is already there. Click another one uh, another time. Then we have the other wall as well. Now I'm going to extrude this upwards for about 300 centimeters. I will uh, close this off. What I will do is I will move this upwards for about 10 centimeters. And now on top of this, I can basically draw uh, the actual cabinet. So I'm going to go something like this. Uh, 55 centimeters, so it's 489. Yeah, something like this. And then let's go upwards. So if the baseboard is 10, the total height is going to be 90, uh, two centimeters for the countertop. So that will be 90 minus seven. Mm, yeah, 90 minus seven is 83. Nice maths, quick maths. Um, we make this a group, rectangular tool once again over here. Uh, let's do 0 0.2 on this. Or is that too much? Well, total height is, yeah, I guess I'll just do this for about 0 0.5 as a gap. And then I can push pull this inwards for about one centimeter. Cool. Um, and now we can basically just draw the cabinets. Well, this part over here, I think this is gonna be, uh, let me just push pull this over here, close this off completely. Basically, now what we will do is, let me inset this. Let's go for about around here. Let's offset this, something like this. Let's go over here. Um, not so good. Yep. I think thinner looks better and closer to what we have in the reference image. Uh, let's do the same in the inset. We're going to push pull this upwards. Let's clean this up for easier uh, material application later on which is exactly what we will be doing. Let's take this off. Let's take this off. Um, this wall will need to be extruded upwards as well. Let's just draw the actual uh, backsplash for something like this. Let's go upwards for about 60 centimeters. Let's group this. Now let's draw the actual cabinets, the top cabinets of the kitchen. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna draw this. I'm gonna push pull this outwards for 30 centimeters. Let's group this. Um, yeah, I mean, these cabinets can, uh, this part of the kitchen can basically just be extruded upwards. 
push pull this all the way up. Nice. Okay. So let me use the rectangular tool once again. Let me click on the corner. Uh, let's go 60. Now what I can do is I can basically copy it with the M key and the control key um, and then just multiply this for about four more times. Nice. Then this final division line, I can just copy it another uh, 0 0.5. And then I can use the push pull tool to push this inwards for uh, one centimeter. And now in order to do that a lot faster, I can just double click on all of the other surfaces. Let me use a rectangle once again, something like this. Let's push pull this downwards for 30 centimeter. Uh, push pull. Okay. Um, I think I'll just leave. Yeah, there was another. There was another window there that I'll just leave it as opening. Let me close this office wall. Um, just modeling approximately here. So let's just close this office wall. And now I can just draw on top of this another surface. Push pull this upwards for 30 centimeters. Um, actually get them on the same line. A section plane. Um, let's just make a section plane on this side. Let's push pull this a bit inwards. Then what we'll need is just a simple pendant lighting. Uh, let's go to the uh, 3D warehouse and let's type in dining chair, I guess. Yeah, I think I'm not even going to go and search for more because like usually a 3D warehouse takes the most amount of time in most of the live streams. Uh, this seems to be a bit smaller scaled. Uh, so let me rotate this as well. I think something like this should work. Uh, pendant line light. I don't know because it seems like a line light. No way. Uh, this seems pretty close. Well, we're having luck with the um, with the three warehouse today. We're not spending too much time on it. Yeah, this and that are pretty close, I guess. We could also add the LED strip lighting, but I don't think that makes a huge difference in our render anyway. I mean, it doesn't need to be too complicated with multiple profiles or anything like that. I mean, it just needs to be uh, simple enough and maybe it doesn't even need to be captured. So yeah, I mean, I'll just leave it like that for now. Cool. What is left here is just some accessories, which we can also use from the D5 render asset library, the stove and the sink, and then we can move on to color coding it as well. So let's go here. Let's just type in uh, kitchen sink. I mean, let's just use this one. I don't think it matters that much. Um, yeah. I'll maybe change the positions of them anyway. Let's just rotate this over here. Okay. So now let me just move on to the color coding. So, um, the table and this part of the kitchen cabinets seem to have the same material. So let's just choose this material, whatever. It doesn't matter because, um, they will be changed either way. This is just for color coding. That way you can apply materials a lot easier in D5. Um, and then it's the kitchen cabinets here as well. Um, yeah, this is pretty much it with the kitchen cabinets. Wait, is it the, yeah. Okay. And then let's just do another material for the upper kitchen cabinets. And then let's just apply a material for the ceiling and the walls as well. Okay. Uh, what else we'll need? Oh yeah. The countertop and the backsplash also need a separate material. So it should be something like this. Uh, no, I think this is pretty much it. And first thing first, I'm going to go to the composition. I'm going to edit the camera. The camera will be an aspect ratio one by one. The perspective will be two point perspective and we will turn off auto exposure and I will decrease the field of view a little bit. I will go a little bit backwards, maybe add some camera clipping plane. So I will update the scene and then I will go to assets. Uh, I will go and type in tile and I will choose, well, maybe this one, let me try. So I'll apply this here. As you can see, the reflection of the green is already a lot less and I'll increase this in size just a little bit. Uh, let me see. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's use this white wall paint. Let me apply it on these walls. Cool. Uh, what I want to try is I'm going to select this wood here. I'm going to duplicate it. So one second. Uh, yeah, duplicate. 
Uh, I will turn off the saturation a bit, uh, maybe a bit more on this side. And then uh, let me also add a bit of a tint right here. Uh, next up, let me go to marble. Let me choose this. Um, I'm going to select the sink. Let me make it metallic. This looks much better. Then let me select these cabinets. Uh, these are supposed to have something like a tint, a tint, something like this. Let me lower this down a bit. Okay, I guess, I guess that could work. Um, anyway, let me select a curtain. Let me go to model. Let me add a curtain here. Uh, let me scroll downwards. Curtain 10, closure. Okay, let's go over here. Let's rotate it. Let's move this upwards. Um, let's just stop this here. Range. I think something like this could work. Now let me add some accessories. So I'm going to type in, or actually I'm going to go to interior or indoor uh, accessories. And let me select these biscuits and whole grains uh, jars, I guess. And I'm going to place them uh, right inside. Uh, so let me just rotate this for 90 degrees. Let me put this a bit more backwards. So like that can work. Um, let me scroll. I think this one. Yeah, we can just put this one here. Okay. Um, I think I want to change something in the sketcher file as well. So I'm just going to push this inwards. So like this. Let me go over here. Let me push this downwards. Okay, let's rotate it. Push pull this aside. Much better because that was getting a bit too, uh, there was too much wood. Okay, so I'm gonna download this and I'll import it right on top here. I think I wanna change the wood. I think I might want to change the wood. Uh, let me go to assets once again. Come on, let's see. Uh, let's rotate it by 90 degrees. Hopefully I can just decrease the actual uh, saturation of this. Mm, interesting. So let me just make it a lot brighter and then maybe now I can, uh, let me add a normal map as well. Oh, I think it's maximum. Uh, what about the displacement material template? Um, let me also decrease the width of it a little bit. Yeah, it looks better like this. Not too bad. Okay. And then I will go to environment. Uh, let's go to HDRI. Uh, this can work. Something like this. But we also need it to be a bit warmer. So maybe we add an HDRI with the sun, but I'm not too sure yet. Let me check. Uh, let's go here. Let's use a rectangle lighting here in the back. Something like this. Let's make it a lot warmer. Let's lower its intensity. Uh, maybe, maybe the attention, uh, attenuation radius is a bit too much. Yep. I'll just leave it like that for now. Let me try and add the ambient occlusion Add pre, um, add the preview. Radius. Yeah, we can leave it something like this. Maybe a painting here or something. This wall seems a bit too empty for my liking. So let's add painting. Are there any paintings? Yeah. Or maybe a person opening the, the fridge, I guess. Oh, okay. This fits in with, a, I guess, with the narrative or uh, whatever. Um, uh, let me take the render and then let's see how it will look like after using uh, the D5 AI enhancer. Uh, so let me just go here. It doesn't look too bad, right? I mean, it, look, it looks fine for, for the amount of time that we are um, actually working in it. AI Enhancer. I think the uh, AI Enhancer is probably being used uh, way too much. Now it's saving, finally, nice. Download, okay. So I'm gonna show you the final image in just a second. Uh, I'm gonna open Photoshop. Uh, let me add the non-AI image and then we'll add the AI image on top of it. Cool. So not too bad, um, but now we'll just use the slider um, tool. And yeah, this came out pretty good. Oh, did we miss the mark with uh, Jordan? I guess so. Well, yeah, uh, <laughs> this is the image. Let me export it as the final one. I think it came out looking pretty good. 